Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So pulling a play straight out of the NVIDIA playbook, AMD decides to launch a new Halo product here today. Now it's coming in for system integrators only at this point in time, but AMD decided, hey, GPUs just, they're, they're not quite expensive enough. So let's go ahead and make a brand new top tier SKU. This will eventually come out to the average market if it's not already being done already. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Does it make sense for these companies to be making new $1,000 plus graphics cards? I'm guessing this is probably gonna be $2,000, but that's just my thought. But regardless, in this particular market, especially now that prices are starting to come down and average gamers are going, hey guys, what about us more than ever? The 3080 Ti did not get a great response from most people out there, but AMD's like, nah, let's go ahead and just do the same thing. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today, but first. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers classes in things like animation, design, illustration, filmmaking, web design, marketing, business strategies, pretty much anything that you've ever had interest in, Skillshare will have classes for you. For example, I've been interested in enhancing my productivity and classes from somebody like Thomas Frank here will really help me get to that next level that I'm looking for. Skillshare offers a premium experience, meaning that there's never any ads and you get to learn from experts that actually practice these skills in the real world. Now you'd think such a premium experience would be expensive, but it's not, coming in at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And even better, right now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description down below will get 30% off that annual Skillshare premium subscription. With so many options to explore at such a reasonable price point, Skillshare is offering you guys the best possible experience here in 2021 to get your skills to the next level or find new creative outlets that you never knew that you had before. So make sure to take advantage of that 30% off offer by clicking the link in the description below. Now back to the video. All right, so over here on videocards.com, AMD launches Radeon RX 6900 liquid cooled uh, with even more performance. So this is an RX 6900 XT LC. So this is actually a chip that I've talked about in the past. I've known that this was a thing ever since the 6900 was announced. And this is based off of the, was it the Navi 21 XTX H variant. Okay, so it's right in the article here. So the big differences here are the boost clock's a little bit higher, 235 megahertz faster on the base and 185 megahertz higher on the boost compared to the air variant. And it's coming in at 330 watts TDP. The other big thing is the memory has been upgraded to 18 gigabits and this increases the maximum memory bandwidth up to 576 gigabytes per second. So that makes sense as obviously the 6900 XT was probably pushing memory bandwidth to its maximum. Now we've known about these for a while, there's been leaks, but now this is officially announced. I, I felt this is the time to talk about it. So this is the official sort of like slide here. This definitely looks like an AMD slide. So instead of calling it an RX 6900 XTX, which is what we were all expecting, it's officially the 6900 XT liquid cooled or LC at the end. I still think going with XTX would have been smarter, but hey, that's just my thought. Here's a picture of the reference design. It looks pretty cool, I, I like it. I mean, it's what you would expect from an all-in-one hybrid liquid cool thing, but I like the new sort of design that they're going with. Now that's basically all the pertinent information that's out there. Like I said, now that it's officially announced, I figured now's the time to talk about it. So as I mentioned, this is not a surprise. We knew that the XTX variant of Navi 21 always existed, but here's the thing. If you guys haven't seen the recent Technomics podcast, I will put a link down below. Paul and I kind of talk about this. AMD now has three to, I mean, four to five SKUs coming off the Navi 21 chip. Because if I remember correctly, there is the Navi 21 XTX without the H. Now we have the one with the H. So that means that there's technically three different dies just for RX 6900 XTs. 
which just have the same name. So besides the liquid cool version, which is pretty easy to tell if you're getting a liquid cooled card or an air cooled card. But other than that, you don't really know which chip you're actually getting. And these are obviously better bin versions of the top tier chip. So AMD's Halo product, which was the 6900 XT, has been replaced by the new Halo product, the RX 6900 XT. You, you can see where this gets a little bit confusing. Now, this was always going to be the Halo product, is really my point here. The 6900 XT literally never needed to exist, the original model that they launched, because these are higher bin chips, they draw more power, and this card right here, at best, is probably going to be 5-ish percent faster than the standard 6900 XT, meaning it's going to be pretty much neck and neck with the RTX 3090 at 4K, and it's going to beat the snot out of it at 1440p. So this is definitely going to be the best card for the 1440p high refresh gaming community. So if you're one of those crazy people with a 240Hz 1440p display, this is going to be the card to get. Now, you may already have a 6900 XT, and now you're looking at this going, well, you just replaced your old Halo product with a new Halo product. I always thought that this card was going to come out with 32 gigabytes of VRAM. I think with the introduction of the RTX 3080 Ti with only 12 gigabytes, AMD's like, well, there's no real point in us throwing a 32 gig card out there. 16 gigabytes is still enough that, you know, it doesn't look bad next to the RTX 3090 with 24 gigs of RAM. It's kind of close there, but if NVIDIA had a 20 or 22 gigabyte card at, let's say, about $1,000, which is what we all were expecting the 3080 Ti to be, that wouldn't look so good having a 16 gig card at $1,500 or $2,000, which is where these are going to land. Yes, they're only going to system integrators right now, but they will eventually filter out. And as I mentioned, they may already be out in the wild. There are liquid cooled versions of the 6900 XT out there. And I believe that they're using the XTX chip, not the XTXH. See, that's the other thing. This just gets really confusing because you don't know which part is which anymore. This is obviously the highest performance, the top bin part that AMD has. Now, Personally, I don't care about the Halo product segment because I would never recommend it for you guys. It doesn't make any sense. The issue here is the 6800 XT and 6800 both use the same die. Now, the fact that there's three die, I believe, there's at least two, we know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure that there are three die for just the 6900 XT, that means that yields are fantastic, which means there's just really not a lot of reason for them to bin down perfectly good chips all the way down to 6800 XTs, and definitely not all the way down to the 6800. Basically, that's a GPU that they probably wish they never launched at this point, to be perfectly honest with you. On the flip side, that is also the best card that they have available. The 6800 XT, you could kind of argue, performance per dollar is pretty close, but overall, the 6800 is the best card in the Navi 21 lineup for gamers in terms of performance per dollar, which is the only metric that really matters to a lot of people. So, yeah, you're just never going to get those if there's three chips in the 6900 XT class, and then the only chips that are going to be bent down will be 6800 XTs. And those are obviously going to be few and far between. Paul and I talked on the podcast about this the other day. It looks like AMD missed the trick, and the trick would have been was making a 60 or 64 CU die, making a completely separate die, so this way they're not cutting down an 80 CU chip all the way down to 60, and then they would actually be able to supply that market. And looking at the performance of something like an RX 6800, even if you just up the power and up the clocks, you're getting most of the performance on that chip. There's almost no reason for there to be an ADCU RDNA 2 chip at this point in time. Because if you can get most of the performance of a 6800 XT or 6900 XT with a 60 or 64 CU chip, that's a smaller chip, you could produce more, you can make more money, blah, 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 blah. Now, obviously, it may, might not have been able to compete with the RTX 3090 like these chips will be, but at the same time, there would that would certainly help out with supply. I would assume that we're going to see very few 6800 XTs and 6800s for the foreseeable future until the sales of the high-end chips just starts dying off. Now, we are starting to see that. 
Um, we've talked about this before. The 6900 XTs seem to be sitting on shelves. The 6700 XTs seem to be in stock everywhere as well and are also sitting on shelves. It's the 6800 XTs and 6800s that are just nowhere to be seen. So this to me just says AMD is just doing what NVIDIA is doing. They're following their playbook just like, well, let's just shoot for higher margin. We don't need to put 32 gigs of RAM on the chip to compete with the high end anymore because... NVIDIA is not really doing anything. I mean, the 6900 XT versus the 3080 Ti in terms of RAM is still superior. So this thing could be a little inferior to the RTX 3090, but if it's faster, especially at 1440p, which is going to be big for a lot of people out there, AMD is going to be able to command RTX 3090 prices, if not even higher. I, I'm just not a big fan of this, guys. I, I don't think that this is going to work. And once again, Paul and I kind of discussed this on the podcast. He even actually did a video the other day going more in depth. I don't think the average AMD GPU buyer really fits the NVIDIA mold where they can just keep just pushing more money out of people. I could be wrong. These could sell very, very well and I could be proven dead wrong, but I don't think that this is the case. Typically, the AMD GPU buyer is the enthusiast. You guys, the people watching this, you guys are the community that would typically be interested in looking at getting the best performance per dollar. So you do the homework, and if that happens to be AMD, then that's the card you go with. If it's NVIDIA, then you buy the NVIDIA card. That's the most reasonable approach. Now, AMD does have that buyer. It's a pretty big market, and we know that. AMD communities are pretty big. And then you also have the budget GPU buyer who's used to buying budget-friendly AMD GPUs that give really great performance per dollar. Now, those people have no option. Zero. There, there's not a single GPU from AMD at this point in time that's even close to a mainstream builder's price point, which would be between two to $300. So their cheapest card's $480, and that's at MSRP. Yeah, that, that's not even close, guys. So that market, they're just completely forgetting about. And they think that they can just capitalize on this super high end market where everybody's like, man, you know, if you spend less than a grand on your GPU, then you're a console pleb or whatever. I don't know what people are thinking uh, to justify these prices, which I find hilarious, by the way, just a little anecdote. Uh, I actually got a comment on my last video saying, why would I give you $5 a month? That's half of what I pay for Amazon or something like that. Uh, so people that, I ask for support, which is you guys, and I really do thank you for your support, but I actually have people out here that are looking at $1,000 plus graphics cards, but $5 a month is going to break the bank. That's that's really kind of a disconnect for me here, guys. Um, so AMD thinks that there are people out there that think of them as kind of the budget brand, asking for tons and tons of money, keep pushing the high end to its absolute maximum. I just don't see that person being real, or not too many of them. A few of you guys probably, you know, you just will never buy an NVIDIA card because, well, let's face it, NVIDIA is kind of a shitty company. They make good products, but as a company, they're pretty shitty. So if you're a 4K gamer and you're like, I'm never buying NVIDIA again, okay, I kind of get it. This might be an option for you, but you may have already bought a 6900 XT and now they're like, yeah, we're just kidding. That's not our real Halo product. Now we have this one here. To me, that's kind of shitty as well, because it's like, guys, this is, was supposed to be your top end card. And now you have another top end card and, you know, the 6900 XT price versus the 6800 XT. It was commanding Halo product price. The performance was not justified in that price jump, but because it was a Halo product, AMD got away with it. Now that's no longer a Halo product, much like the 3080 Ti is not a Halo product. That's why it doesn't make sense being massively overpriced from the 3080. So I just see this being uh, just another money grab from the second GPU manufacturer. There's no other option here. They're both just grabbing for as much money as possible. I don't think that AMD has the customer base that will follow this. NVIDIA does. NVIDIA can pump out any product uh, just get one reviewer to say something nice about it. E even if nobody says anything nice about it, there's still people going to buy it. They're going to be like, huh, there's an NVIDIA card. It's $1,200. Do I have $1,200? Yes, I do. Okay, I will buy it. And that's literally as far as these people's brains go. I want to play game. I have $1,200. I give you $1,200. I play game. No, I don't give you $5 for making videos that I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> those guys do exist, okay? Now... 
AMD just doesn't have that customer. They have smart customers and then they have budget customers. And realistically, you can't get away with doing this. I hope not anyway. I, I think I think we need these things to just rot on shelves. As Paul always says, these just need to rot on shelves. AMD needs to pump these out. Uh, they're, you know, AIB system integrators. They just need to start losing money, start bleeding money on these products uh, until they're like, guys, you have to start pricing your stuff more competitively. You can't charge these prices because nobody's buying them from us. And then at that point, they will get more competitive on pricing. Then NVIDIA will get more competitive on pricing. So the only way GPU prices are going to get any better, it's not going to be on the NVIDIA side. Like I said, they have too many people out there that just go, huh, I, I have this much money. I buy card. Yay, me happy. Oh, you have other card. You bad. You know, that's that's about as far as their brains go. The intelligent community out there, they will weigh out all the options. They're going to look at this thing and be like, Nah, are you, are you freaking kidding me? No, this is a ridiculous price. Please give me an RX 6800 XT or 6800 at, you know, MSRP. I'd much rather have that. Quit wasting die on these crazy expensive things. At least I hope that's the case. Now, the moment of truth. I need you guys to go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. Do you think I'm right on this? Do you think Paul and I kind of have the right grasp on the AMD GPU situation? I personally think that they, they just are targeting a market that they don't have. And that's a real issue because the chips that we should be getting at reasonable prices just don't exist. Or do you think that, nope, AMD does have enough of the supremely high-end market and, and the people that are like, yay, $2,000 graphics cards, but no $5 for YouTubers. Uh, do they have enough of those guys? If they do... Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see here, but I personally don't think that they do. I want to hear your thoughts though, in the comment section below. I think that this will be a topic of discussion moving forward as we see the sales of the RDNA 2 kind of work itself out now that supply seems to be catching up. Prices are still stupid and we'll just have to wait and see where things bottom out. I personally think that the AMD cards are going to bottom out a lot faster than the Nvidia cards. That's just my thought. Um, you know, RTX 3070s, once they hit 999, there's gonna be a lot of people going, hey, that's less than a thousand bucks. Let me start buying that. 6700 XTs are already having to drop down into the 700s and they're still not selling. So I think that those are going to hit MSRP way before the NVIDIA cards. But once again, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you do think that this content's worth supporting and getting perks and talking with me directly and asking questions on the Technomics podcast, if that might be worth springing five bucks a month, first off, thank you. Links are down in the description below, or you can just hit that join tab if you have a Google account. It's a little bit easier. And yes, thank you all for your support. That's really the best way that you can directly support the channel. If you can't afford $5 a month, obviously you're not looking at $1,000 plus graphics cards. And I also thank you for your support by just liking, sharing, subscribing. Believe it or not, that's the best way overall to support the channel. Thank you so much. But that's really all I have for you guys here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.